Oh, what it do, y'all? Coming at you live. Gary Talks from Reggie. Reggie is the name of my van. Reginald is her full name. Yes, it is a boy's name. Like, Gary is a boy's name. Um, but I'll show you her. Nice little look. This is Reg. She's dirty. We've been in some, like, dusty spots and, you know, all the bugs on the windshield and such. But that's me from, as you see, New York, and I am in Hollister Hills, California. Um, open season, open riding season just began today, so people are, you'll hear probably some motorcycles in the background, but these are, these are the grounds that I'm staying at. Um, had a really delightful time writing my newsletter, my first ever newsletter, um, and this is actually a segment of it, so it's called Tea and Tools. Uh, I wanted to share some tea so like a conflict or whatever disagreement something challenging that i'm going through and then some tools that i can extend to you to navigate through your own space best trying to figure out how to do it i guess i'll tell you all the story and then give you the tools um i'll say the tools and then tell you the story and then give you the tools again how's that three tools for you the first tool it's important to know your needs it's important to know when they change and shift and it's super important to communicate that with the people who need to know about that right so if you're in a relationship with somebody uh where you show up for them in a particular way and that is no longer the case because your capacity has shifted or your availability has shifted or your desire to do that has shifted it's important to name that tell that person right because it's different when somebody has to come seek information from you versus you tell them the information right it's not to say one is better or worse right but it feels different right somebody being like Hey, I'm going to be late versus like, yo, where are you at? Oh, I'm 30 minutes late. It's a different vibe, right? So same thing with our needs. As long as we are aware of them as far in advance as we can be aware of them or when we are aware that they're shifting, it's important to communicate the shift to other people. First tip. I should have some graphics here, but we'll work on that. Second tip I would say is to be connected with your intuition, right? So be, pay attention to where your interest lies be pay attention to where your interest goes where your curiosity flows right where you feel pulled towards because those things will often cue you to what your needs are so then you can better practice the first step of telling other people when they have shifted right because if you're checking in with yourself then you know when things are changing Okay, and the third thing, and these will all make more sense when I tell you the story, but I just wanted to give you to them, give them to you off the bat. If you got to go quick, three tips for you. The third one I would say is create and utilize a support network. It's important to know who your go to emergency people are when you are in crisis, when you're just having a moment, you're having a day where you don't have capacity, you don't know where to go, you don't know what to do. It's important to have at least one person, at least one to go to an emergency person right and i'm a full believer in honor yourself you know you're the best and you know self-love self-sufficiency self evident all of these things yes we do need to center ourselves and be sufficient in ourselves also we're relational creatures it's important for us to connect with other human beings so please have your emergency person that you can go talk to to affirm what you're going through right to tell you that you're not crazy, that you're not alone, and to just hold space. Literally be quiet, give you to offer you what you need, right? If you need somebody to be quiet, if you need somebody to give you advice, somebody to just hold the space, be a sounding board, that's important, right? So the three things, like I said, know your needs, know when they shift and announce them. Be forthcoming. Check in with your intuition, be connected with that. It will help you understand your needs better and utilize a support network. OK, so those are your tips for you. And I'll tell you where I came up with these things. So recently I have I have been in conflict with a good friend of mine, um, one of my really dear friends and like close partners in life. Um, they're the, actually the reason that this whole trip has even begun. Right. So I, the reason I'm in this van and deciding to move across the country is I got an opportunity to live in Tahoe with this person, their partner and two other people who are the partner's friends, right? So my connection in the space is my friend. Um, two days in, oh, sorry, not two days in, <laughs> two weeks in, three weeks in, I suppose. I was supposed to be there by like September 1st. Um, 
and this is where the first tip comes from. When I started driving, my goal shifted from getting to Tahoe entirely, right? My whole thing shifted, right? It turned into keeping myself safe, honoring my capacity and Reg's capacity, right? Checking in with that and making sure that she's always good so that I'm always good, right? And then seeing the sights of the world. So now Tahoe has gone from top of the list to like fifth on the list at least, right? So it's no longer in the top of my priorities, but I didn't announce that to somebody, right? So that's the part that I can announce now is my giving in the conflict. That was that was less than ideal of me, right? And it held, it really fueled the conflict because it was quiet, right? And also as a person who does like to communicate, if I'm not communicating, it makes it very hard for the other person to communicate with me. So that's the first thing. Tied to the second thing, as I was traveling, I did start to realize where my interests lied, right? It was not, my excitement did not lie in getting to my final destination. It was actually in the journey. It was in every single place that I was stopping and just seeing the way that the world was different, the way people moved was different. The Midwest is so different, y'all. Y'all got to check out the Midwest if you haven't been there. It's very interesting. Um, But just realizing, oh, this actually pulls me more figuring out this and strategizing where to go next and how to take care of reg and making money on the road these all are all things that actually feel a lot more present and real and exciting for me than this other prospect that feels a lot more far away and obviously because it is a destination that is farther away literally there's thousands of miles between me and that place but also paying attention to again what what draws my attention my attention, intention, my want, my desire to, to, to pursue it, right? Um, if I was more in tune with that, if I was paying attention to the fact that traveling and the curiosity of nature is actually what was drawing me, I could have also voiced that opinion a lot sooner to my friend, right? Um, and then, so I'll pause here and then tell you about the third one. So um, it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy couple of it's been a crazy month for me. I left New York all, end of August and I've been traveling since then and kind of thrust it into this life now after deciding not to live with these people that I was initially going to live with. So now I'm doing van life full time and like to this has been a really beautiful stop because there's amazing Wi-Fi. So I've been able to pause and kind of like take stock and plan and like look at different sites and stuff like that, you know. Um, but prior to this moment, my so my friend... I reached out to them because I noticed they were giving me the silent treatment. And so I reached out to them and we started engaging about the the shifts of the plans, right? At this point, though, three weeks later than when I said I was going to come, there's a lot of emotions that are involved, right? On their part and also mostly, I mean, I want to say mostly on their part. And then I was reacting to a lot of their emotions, right? And also I'm going through my own shit. So two weeks ago, found out I had COVID, y'all, and no longer have it thankfully got my results today uh but it was a stressful couple of weeks so we're coming into this conflict in different like this is a very the conflict was intense right they're coming in because they're disappointed and fresh they're disappointed that i'm late frustrated about my lack of communication i am frustrated and upset because they have withheld their care from me because i felt because they were upset about this conflict maybe there's other stuff i think that's a capacity thing but point is we in conflict right and the way that the conflict developed and the the things that were said and the way that i felt the the emotional unsafety and unwelcomeness that was created in the conversation i decided not to live there anymore um and the reason i'm making this video is not just to talk shit right it's to like i said to share these three tips that as i really sat to reflect on what happened i realized if I had been more in tune with my intuition and been more honest with my needs with this person, we probably would have been in a very different place, right? But I did not, so we ended up where we ended up. Then I was kind of shit out of luck out of a place to stay, and I was pissed and blown and shook. And in the past, that's something that would have created a big spiral for me, and I would have been sad and <laughs> so nobody loves me, you know? It would have started a whole shame spiral. Uh, but it, again... This third tip, this is where it comes into play, utilize your networks. I spoke to my friends. I spoke to other friends about this. I spoke to people who knew both of us, 
you know, who have experienced both of us, me and this other friend. Um, people who would be able to just listen and hold space and be a sounding board. Um, and the most valuable person I spoke to, there's two people that were that come to mind, but the, one of the most valuable people that I spoke to was my dad, actually, who was like, I just want to remind you, um, you have home everywhere, right? So if you're ever tired of this, like, I know you're finding yourself and you're doing this whole journey, but if you ever need a place to, like, rest, you just need to, like, <laughs> give it a break, come home to us, please. Also, you got people everywhere. I promise you there's people in California. So, you know, just say the word and we'll figure it out. So that was really, really beautiful to have somebody. And this is why I noticed, like, it's dangerous to be in abusive situations or manipulative, manipulative situations where all your resources, all your eggs are in one basket, where you're depending on one person for housing, for money, for whatever. It's dangerous. Because if they switch up on you, it's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? This is where the self-sufficiency comes in. It's important to have ourself and a network. So that we're not dependent on just one person. Because that's where abuse can really happen. When you're dependent on one person. You know? Not always. Don't take it to be like always. But it's very easy to get shifty in that kind of situation. Um, So I hope this was insightful. Let me know. Uh, The three tips one more time for you is to always be in tune with your needs. If you need support with that, let me know because I love to talk about needs and I can send you mad resources on that. So be sure to know what your needs are. Be aware when they're shifting and voice that to the people who it's, you know, who who that is important for to know. Important to know that information. Whoever is important, whoever needs to know that information, let them know that. Volunteer it. Um, Trust your gut. Follow your intuition. Pay attention to the things that pull you that pique your interest, that intrigue you, that make you want to go further. Um, Because it can help you identify your needs if you're having trouble identifying your needs. And then the third thing is, first of all, please identify an emergency person who can help you in times of crisis. And then build, build that network. Make a list of people, five people, three people, you know, 20 people. Whoever you need to go through so that you can have some support. So those are my little tips for y'all. I hope this is helpful. Um, Yeah, I'll try to do more updates. The newsletter is monthly, so tea and tools will happen once a month. Um, But I do want to be more vocal about this journey in general because it's been crazy. And y'all deserve to know because it's, you know, it's an amazing, it's just so amazing. I wish you, I'm going to share my views with you and you'll know. (laughs) This has been a crazy trip. Um, So yeah. That's what I got for you.